Hey guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for the fifth part of the What Matters Most series, in which I'm testing all the components on the car to find out which one matters most to a car's one lap pace. In this case, we're doing a Honda NSX around Laguna Seca on Gran Turismo 4, as always. Last time out, we saw the effect the brakes had, and it was surprising to say the least. To be honest, it was surprisingly ineffective, which was really surprising considering they did have high hopes to improve our NSX's lap time, but was really kind of underwhelming as you can see in the last video. Anyway, this time we are, to be honest, arguably ruining our beautiful NSX by putting a rear spoiler on it. Yes, you heard right, and you won't need glasses either, because we have put this garish rear spoiler onto our NSX. And while this isn't a pretty thing to do to our beautifully balanced NSX, it does have promise to its lap time. That is because the beautiful mid-engined rear-wheel drive balance won't be affected as there was a spoiler on the front included. Or at least that is what it says, because even though it says that, I can't see it. I, it's not even visible, um, but I guess I'll just ignore that and just assume that there's a front spoiler there, even though if I can't see it. Well, that aside, obviously aerodynamics can massively help the car's performance once it is done right. I mean, just look at how prominent it is in Formula 1 and how badly it goes once it's gone all together. So having good spoilers and good aerodynamics are done to help press the car down into the road, giving the tyres more grip and giving the car superior cornering capabilities than without it. So with our car being rear wheel drive and having 281 horsepower to control, this rear spoiler should help us there, unlike if the car's front wheel drive, in which case it's basically just dead weight and is actually ruining the aerodynamics of the car by giving it more drag. You know, sounds familiar to anyone? If you think it's going to push down, yeah? Yes. yes. Onto the rear wheels. Yes. And this is a front wheel drive car. Yeah! 135. An hour of your life. Yes. 137.03. Nearly a second added by the spoiler. Anyway, alongside that, we do have our invisible front spoiler slash most likely it's probably a, um, a front splitter, which should also help front-end grip and also cornering capability. Anyway, let's look at the spoiler settings. Now, as you can see, there is a slider for the, both spoilers, the front and the rear, which ranges from zero, which to us is a complete waste of time, because why would you have it on zero? Because then, if it's not giving you any downforce, it's just adding drag. So, basically, there's no point in keeping it on zero, um, but the slider goes from 0 all the way up to 30. And now more downforce is almost always better, especially as I didn't notice much of a straight line speed deficit with it being on the fuller setting anyway. And since we aren't on like an oval track, like test course, you aren't losing much by having the spoiler on. So without losing much straight line speed, or at least noticeable straight line speed, but having such a massive cornering advantage, it makes sense to have it on the maximum settings anyway. So let's stick both spoilers on the highest setting, which is 30, and see how much of an improvement, if any, it produces. So firstly, let's remember that the standard time for this series, set in the first episode, was of 1 minute 39.7. Now since then we've had these amazing rear spoilers fitted, and to be honest I do mean amazing, because the amount of confidence I gained from these spoilers and cornering capability was something rivaled only to the tyres seen in episode 2, and that was jaw-dropping in itself. Now obviously the dream is to have those high grip tyres with these spoilers, but in this episode we're only testing the spoilers and we've still got the standard sports medium tyres on, but I will be combining all the parts in the last episode, which should create the dream NSX. So for now we just have to look at the spoilers on the standard car, and amazingly it gave us an improvement of 1.6 seconds a lap. Yes, 1.6 seconds a lap. That is stunning pace seen by the spoilers, and it's unsurprising with the sheer increase in cornering speeds, which I will get into later. But 1.6 seconds a lap from a car which is already beautifully balanced with its mid-engined layout, which is surprising because it's not exactly a difficult car to control by any means, but that 1.6 second advantage a lap is amazing. But anyway, let's have a look into how it gained that extra 1.6 seconds a lap. Now spoilers aren't generally useful in straight lines, it's more cornering speeds where they're useful in. So let's look at turn 5, 
which is a demanding corner with a slight lean uphill, which can easily unsettle the car, especially with how brutal the curbs are in that corner. So it's a good test for a car's cornering capabilities and my confidence with the car before and after the spoilers were fitted. Because driver confidence with the car is probably as important as the capability of the car itself. And if the spoilers add driver confidence as well as driving capability, then we could really be onto a win-win here. So here we can see the car going around at 60 miles an hour. And also note how the car isn't quite at the apex. It's not too far away. But that slightly wider line could cost time, especially as it's going slower in the first place. By comparison, the NSX with the spoilers on was going around at 62 miles an hour, which is a whole 2 miles an hour faster. Also notice how it is closer to the inside of the track and is basically right on the curb, something that wasn't present without the spoilers, as you can see from this side by side comparison. And obviously, going faster and taking a shorter line. It's basically a win-win situation really because you're going faster for a shorter distance and think about with that advantage around the whole lap not just around the first corner is why the spoilers were able to pull out 1.6 seconds a lap on the car without spoilers. So there you go spoilers even on a road car and with only sports tyres on can still have a massive effect on the lap time of a car so this isn't to be snuffed at especially as spoilers are one of the cheapest modifications you can do to a car in the game. So it's definitely worth your time and money to invest in some front and rear spoilers. But only if the car is actually fast enough to need it. But as we can see, this NSX is fast enough for it to be beneficial. So it should be useful on a wide variety of cars. Especially if cornering speeds is the weakness in that car, and it's something you need to improve, then this is basically one of the bargains in the game, to be honest. Apart from the tyres, it is probably the bargain in the game. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this fifth part to the What Matters Most series and found the performance boost the front and rear spoilers gave to the NSX surprising. Or maybe it was exactly what you expected. Whether it was, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Next episode we'll be getting very technical when I look into the transmission and specifically the gearing and the gear ratios of the NSX. Just how much does customising gear ratios set to the perfect setting for the car and the track help to boost the car? Well, it should help to gain the car extra acceleration without a noticeable drop in top speed because obviously if you're setting it custom for the track, you won't reach above that speed anyway because it's simply not possible. So you're gaining extra acceleration for nothing. Sounds too good to be true? Well, be sure to stick around for the next episode where I'll be looking into it. So I'll see you guys then.